Hi, I'm Sarah, and I was born in the beautiful town of Woodmead. I loved it there because we were surrounded by people who knew and loved us. I was five years old when we spent our last Christmas there, opening gifts with my cousins. Look, I got a jewelry box with a little ballerina. I know how much you love ballet, so mom let me get it for you. The gifts were great, but it was about having all of our family and friends around that made me love Christmas. But about a month later, my parents started acting so weirdly. Put on this wig and sunglasses. We're going on a little trip. But why do I have to wear this, Mom? We're going to play pretend. You can even choose a new name for yourself. Ballet shoes. I want to be called ballet shoes. And ever since then, we've never been back to Woodmead. Not even to see family. I was homeschooled, and I wasn't allowed to speak to anyone. When I was around 10, I got so sick and tired of her life, I ran out the gates and into the forest. Sarah! Sarah! I'll only come out when you tell me that we can go back to our old home. But this is our new life, honey. I thought you'd be used to it by now. How can anyone get used to living like an alien? Every time we go out, we all wear wigs and change our names. I'm tired of it. Take me back to see my cousins and friends. Mom eventually found me behind the tree and carried me back home. I was so angry at my parents, but they never heard me out. And then one day, when I was 14, they were watching the news and the reporter was talking about fugitives. Are we fugitives? Is that why we can't talk to anyone? No, honey, we are actually. Dad was about to tell me what the real deal was, but Mom stopped him to tell me the greatest news, and I forgot about the fugitive thing. I've got good news for you. You can start going to real school. But on one condition, you can't make friends or speak to anyone. I was so excited to finally get out of the house, so I didn't worry much about the terms and conditions. On my first day of school, I was so excited, but it soon wore off. As I walked down the school corridor, I noticed everyone staring at me. They whispered as I walked by, but I knew I couldn't speak, so I just rushed to my class. When I got into the class, the teacher smiled at me strangely and introduced me to the class. Class, this is Sarah. Do you remember me telling you about her? The teacher suddenly started speaking to me like she had a speech problem. Welcome to class, Sarah. I thought it would be different at school, but I still felt like an alien. Everyone acted so strange. When I got home, mom and I started dinner, then dad came home. How are my favorite girls? Your only girls. Dinner's ready, let's eat. Then it's game night and dad gets to choose. How was school today, pumpkin? Talk to anyone? No, Dad. I didn't talk to anyone. What's the matter, sweetie? Today at school, all the kids were staring and whispering, you know, as if something was wrong with me. And then when I got to class, the teacher spoke to me so slowly. You were new there, sweetie. Everything will seem strange. That doesn't make any sense. At least you're around other kids, right? I guess. I couldn't stop thinking about how strange everyone acted. After dinner, I didn't feel like playing any games, so I went straight to bed. Months went by, and I was still the quiet weirdo at school with no friends. Soon, everyone started talking about Christmas gifts. Hey, who do you have to get a gift for? I'm not telling. It would ruin the whole surprise. All right, everyone. Here are the science results. This was my favorite subject. And whenever I got an A-plus on my tests, kids would be jealous and pick on my muteness. I wonder how the mute girl gets 100% all the time. Maybe she's the teacher's favorite because she's so quiet. After they were done talking, I walked past their table and let out a smelly soft gas right next to the tables. Ew, I think I'm going to vomit. What's that disgusting smell? I smiled and walked out of the class, feeling good about my sweet revenge. Later that night, while I sat reading, Mom and Dad watched the news again. And then suddenly, I heard that fugitive word again. Mom, Dad, I know I've asked before, but are we fugitives? Well, sweetie, it's like this. No, sweetie, we're not. Fugitives are usually on the run because they've done something bad. Have we done something bad? No, sweetie. Can we talk about something happier, please? The kids at school are going to exchange gifts for Christmas. Oh, that reminds me. We need to plan for our annual party. We're the only ones that are going to be there, Dad. Some party that will be. My parents didn't understand. I wished so badly to have a friend my age, just to talk to. A week later, I think my wish came true because a new girl joined our class and she kept glaring at me and I just kept smiling back. Class, this is Alia. She is new here. I want you all to be nice. Alia sat down and didn't seem to mind that I didn't speak. 
Hello. I just smiled and waved back. She smiled back and I had such an urge to open my mouth and say, Can we be friends, please? And then during recess, while I sat all by myself as usual, Alia came and sat with me. Hi again. Do you mind if I sit here? I smiled and nodded again. She must have thought I was a crazy person. All this smiling and nodding. <laughs> But she really didn't mind, since she kept coming back. After a few weeks of listening to Alia, I could tell why she didn't have any other friends. She was a motor mouth. Hey, Sarah, how was your weekend? My mom took me to get a dress for the Winter Wonderland dance, and then we went to this beautiful museum. It was so much fun. I even got this really cool glow stick and a chain and a bracelet and this awesome nightlight. It makes all the items at the museum show on the walls at night and... I smiled and waited for the rest of Alia's story. But then she said something that I couldn't keep quiet about. Oh, how I wish you didn't have that speech disorder. I so want to know how your weekend went. Just imagine if I shouted out before Alia could complete her sentence. Speech disorder? Who told you I have a speech disorder? The principal. Your parents told him just so the other kids wouldn't pick on you. I was so mad I could have screamed again. But the others were coming in. The teacher continued with the lesson, but I wasn't paying attention. I obeyed my parents. And now I find out they lied about why I didn't speak. It was time for me to return the favor. Okay, class. Today is book reading day. Does anyone want to go first? Thank you, Sarah. You can leave your book on my desk. But instead, I started reading my book fluently. The teacher in the class stared at me in amazement, and then one of the girls stood up and shouted, She can speak! It's a miracle! I couldn't contain myself and burst into a fit of giggles. The rest of the class followed along. During recess, all the kids surrounded me like I was a celebrity, wanting to hear me speak. Alia eventually came to my rescue. Okay, guys, give Sarah a break. She just found her voice. We don't want her to lose it again. Yeah, guys, Ollie is right. She never gets tired of talking. So you're welcome to stay and listen to her. Be warned, though, she doesn't have a stop button or even a pause. We all laughed. It felt amazing to be part of the class and not left out anymore. And all the kids were so accepting. I'm glad I caught you before you left. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope it's not about the joke I made during recess. It was honestly just a joke. I love that you are so talkative. <laughs> and no, I wasn't offended. I wanted to know if you have a partner for the Christmas gift giving day. I almost forgot about that. No, I don't. Great, then we can get gifts for each other. Things were really looking great for me at school. Until I got home. Dad was sitting on the couch, looking very serious. Dad, are you all right? Mom didn't speak to me at all on the way home. Is everything okay? The principal of your school called us this morning. My heart sank. I knew what was coming. He said that everyone was calling it a miracle that you are speaking. Well, uh... How long were you going to keep this from us? And don't stutter. You're a walking miracle to your friends. Yes, Mom. Friends. For the first time in a long time, I felt accepted and part of the group. I won't apologize for that. You watch your tone, young lady. We are still your parents. I have to wonder, what is that supposed to mean? You lied to the principal that I couldn't speak because of a speech disorder. How could you do that? And what about taking me away from all the people we loved and making me dress like someone else? Sometimes I don't even know who I am or where I belong. And who wants their child to be a mute at school and not have any friends? Everything we do is to keep you safe. Safe from what? A bunch of teenagers? Enough. Go to your room. Ugh, Mom and Dad were being so unfair, and I felt like an animal stuck in a cage. The next morning, I went to the kitchen, and Mom and Dad were there. I ignored them, but they looked so sad. We're sorry about last night, sweetie. We understand that we have been hard on you. And to make it up to you, we're going to let you be a part of the Christmas gift exchange. We just have to get a gift from them all. Whoa! Holly was right! I did find my voice! Mom and Dad actually heard me <laughs> out last night. When we got to the mall, I was so excited to look for a gift for Alia. Okay, remember, no wandering off, all right. Yes, Mom, I know. Mom and Dad were being so cool. We got the gift and we had lunch, then played games at the arcade. I was so exhausted by the time I got to the car that I fell fast asleep. Wake up, sleepy. We're home. I felt like I slept for hours, but I couldn't have because when Mom woke me, she said we were home. The only thing was, this wasn't home. The more I looked around, the more confused I was. Mom, Dad, where are we? This is our new home. No, it's not. I want to go home. <gasps> Sarah, please. You're acting like a baby. Stop treating me like one. The moment I get close to anyone, you move across the state. What is wrong with you? 
I was so upset. I ignored dad when he tried to explain. He left with mom to move our things into his new house while I sat in the car. Then he came over to me. Sarah, are you all right? No, dad. I can't do this anymore. It may have been fun when I was little. Not anymore. Okay, it's late. We should head inside. Tomorrow we see the new school. What do you say, sweetie? I say no! Eventually, I gave in and started in the new school. For this next experiment, I want you to pair up. After the teacher gave his instructions, Lincoln approached me. He was this guy that no one paid attention to since he dressed like a goth. Well, looks like that's you and me. He did the exact opposite of what the teacher said and started pouring yellow liquid into the beaker. Relax, you'll see. And this goes in next. And the next thing I knew, we were covered in green goop that exploded all over us. Oops, I guess I heard wrong. <laughs> we were sent to get cleaned up, and as we walked, Lincoln talked and talked. So, what's your story? I heard that you can't speak. Were you born without a tongue or something? It felt like deja vu, and I was so angry at my parents for spreading this lie again, so I just told Lincoln the truth. I have a tongue, so you can squash your crazy theory. I just can't make friends. Wow, you're actually good at it. Talking, I mean. You know, it might help you make friends. You think I don't know that? Before I knew it, I had told Lincoln my whole sad story. I felt good getting it off my chest, and I didn't take Lincoln for a gossip. But when I got to school the next day, I realized I was wrong about him. What's it like having fugitive parents? Excuse me? Have you always been on the run? Then I knew Lincoln gossiped. When I found him, I let him have it. How could you? I never said we were fugitives! I must have heard wrong. I felt like shaking Lincoln so he would hear straight, but then this monster of a girl came at me from nowhere. I managed to move out of her way just before she could ram me. You leave my brother alone, or else I won't miss next time. Your brother is a gossip. Jess, it's all right. I'm fine. See? Jessica didn't hear Lincoln. She took a swing at me, but couldn't land it because someone grabbed her arm. The principal was the one that grabbed Jessica's arm. It turns out this wasn't the first time she got into trouble trying to defend Lincoln. I just got a final warning and two weeks suspension because of you! Well, at least you get to come back. I didn't care who Jessica blamed. I was just so mad at Lincoln. He turned out to be such a jerk! When I went into the office, the principal left and my mom and dad were there. Immediately, my defenses went up. Are you alright? Yeah, mom, I'm alright. We shouldn't have pressured you. We only thought about keeping you safe, and not how this might make you feel. I didn't expect this. I was so used to fighting mom and dad by now, I didn't know what to say. So I cried. I'm so sorry. I should have listened. Now look what's happened because I couldn't keep quiet. It's all right, sweetie. I should have told you from the start. We are in a witness protection program. Your dad and I testified against some hardened criminals, and we couldn't risk them finding you. Oh, Mom, I'm so sorry I never trusted you. I think it's time we go home. When we got home, I saw that Mom and Dad had packed. This was something I should have expected. Okay, we're all set. Ready, sweetie? Yes, Dad. Dad loaded the car, and we set off. I wondered about the next town. You should get comfy, sweetie. We're in for a long drive. Where are we headed? Home, sweetie. Home. I soon fell asleep. I woke up when I felt the car stop. We were parked outside our old house in Woodmead. I didn't understand. I thought we weren't safe here. Mom, Dad, what are we doing here? I told you we were going home. Those bad people I told you about, they have finally been sent to prison. It was Christmas, and we were all together, just like when I was little. But I had to do something very important. Mom, Dad, can we go for one last trip? Okay, but it's Christmas. I know, but I promised someone that I would buy them a gift. My parents agreed, and I couldn't wait to get to our destination. When we finally arrived, I knocked on the snowflake decorated door, and I was so happy to see Alia's face again. Sarah? What are you doing here? I thought I would never see you again. I came to give you your present. Alia immediately hugged me, almost crying. Thank you for remembering. This means a lot. I kept your present as well. This is what I loved most about Christmas. Not the gifts, but being able to make someone smile.